Premier of Queensland used to do to the English language? The Leader of the Opposition. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Before I ask my question, can I seek leave to table the document that I referred to before in relation to superannuation? Is leave granted? Leave is not granted. The Leader of the Opposition. My question. Order. Order. So then, if it's uh, kosher, it would, uh, can go in. The, le the Leader of the Opposition has a question. My question without notice is to the Prime Minister. In view of the overwhelming public support for the current flag, Will you give an undertaking to the House to never again denigrate our national flag? Yes. To never Order. again. Order, members on my right. To never, to never again denigrate our national Member flag Gabriel. while overseas. Yes. Further, I ask the Prime Minister, when will he allow this House the opportunity to express its support for the national flag? Yes. Speaker, the this, the this Prime question Minister. comes from a person who blackguards Australia abroad oh. at, at will. Whenever it suits him. Order. As I indicated in the House last week, his attacks while in New Zealand upon Australia, uh, the mores of this society, its, uh, its performance as an economy, all of these things are subject to attacks by the opposition when they are outside of this country. And it's always been the case. It's always been the case. In fact, the, the deputy leader of the, National of the Liberal Party attacked the central bank governor in front of a very large and prestigious. Audi audience of, uh, order. of, uh, the of uh, Asian the Prime bankers on the basis of the Speaker. central bank order. being politically manipulated. The Prime Minister resumes. The member for, for Deakin on a point of order. Mr. Speaker, the, the question asked by the Leader of the Opposition was quite specific, and the Prime Minister is now straying into many other areas not related to it. Yes. Under Standing Order 145, I'd ask you to have him return to the relevance of the answer to the question asked. Mr. Order, the Honourable yeah, yeah. Prime Minister will answer the question. Uh, Order. Uh, Mr Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition, uh, the leader of the opposition is uh, always at it, and uh, as I said, I'm repeating, repeating myself, but as he is, I will too. Uh, and said, Order. Uh, uh, in the uh, Herald Sun, Dr Hewson said the, the weekend of ceremonies beginning today was not the time for playing politics, but then proceeded to do just that in Papua New Guinea. <laughs> Hewson attacks Keating in Papua New Guinea. That's right. Then it says, Order. The House will come to order. Dr. Order. Hewson's office, another one on the Canberra Times, Dr. Hewson's office confirmed the comment was directed at Mr. Keating. It appears to be a breach of protocol, raising domestic issues outside the country, etc. It went on. And then he got his celebrated remarks in New Zealand about Australia. We've fallen off the pace dramatically. The Asia Pacific. I'll come to that in a second. The Asia Pacific region. No, I'm talking about. No, no, order. We're just getting clear. The integrity of your position, which of course is, which of course is negligible. negligible. Order. The House will come to order. Order. The member for Isaacs on a point of order. My point of order is understanding Order 145 of relevance, Mr Speaker. The question was very specific with respect to the flag. Mm. Now, you did ask the Prime Minister to get back to addressing the question, and I would ask you if you would again get him to do that or sit down. Order. The Prime Minister is in order. The Honourable Prime Minister. Order. Mr Speaker, uh, it went on to say we have to jettison 20 lost years, if you like, of bad policy, bad attitudes and bad values by just about everybody. Now, this is, this is the loyalists to Australia abroad saying of Australians that they have bad attitudes and bad values. Bad attitudes and Order. bad values by just for about Lyle, everyone, for Gippsland, we'll and not just the objective. government, he said, everybody. So the fact is, the this fellow has absolutely not a shred of credibility seeking to direct a question to me about remarks made by me outside of Australia about the flag or anything else. And as far as the flag is concerned, Mr. Speaker, again, I remind, uh, I remind, uh, I remind the Leader of the Opposition of what I said in the House last week, and I'll say again, it is not satisfactory for Australia to have a representational image of, of itself with a flag of another country in the corner of its flag. Full stop. Full stop. Now, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, uh, that being, nevertheless, Order. that being said, that being said, Mr. Speaker, that said, the fact is, this is a debate worth having. This is a debate worth having. This is a debate worth having, and uh, I've made it clear, Mr. Speaker, that. Uh, the government will not be seeking to uh, change the flag, other than, other than by 
uh, by, by simply that there is a clear majority of Australians in favour of. And, uh, but the fact Order. is that, uh, but the notion of uh, of the of the lick spittles opposite the dressing Gilmore. themselves in the flag and then trying to find at their unctuous best some virtue in the fact that they are defending defending a flag, which which at which at, at its inception the, the the drafting instruction for the design was should be based on the British ensigns as flags of the countries added to its fold, signalling to the beholder that it is an imperial union ensign of the British Empire. If you're, ple if you're pleased and proud about that, you're just running true to form as all of your predecessors in this House have. The Honourable Member for Capricornia. Mr. Mr Speaker, I direct my question to the Prime Minister and I ask that is it correct that the Forest Conservation and Major Projects Bill was defeated in the Senate early this morning? And will he advise the House why the government wanted this legislation passed and also explain why it failed? Amen. The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, it is Order. true that the legislation was defeated in the Senate. It is true. Member for Higgins. Uh, the government wanted the legislation passed because it would guarantee resource security, particularly in relation to large, large pulp mills. Large pulp Member mills. for Gippsland. And it failed because of petty politicking by the Leader of the Opposition and his party. Now, Mr Speaker, the Opposition blocked the bill, and yet in this House we've had, we've had crocodile tears about jobs from the Leader of the Opposition now for months. When he had the chance to vote in the Senate to, for thousands of jobs, he voted it down. He voted the legislation down. So, so he's come into the House. Uh, I mean, again, in, as, as late as the 30th of April 1992, on a matter of public importance around resource security, he said, "This has particularly come to light in recent days as major government decisions go by and opportunities are lost, as in relation to resource security, to actually get genuine development in the form of a pulp mill in northern Tasmania." This is what he had the gall to say on the 30th of Order, April. The member for O'Connor on a point yes, of order. I draw your attention to Standing Order Number 73 when the Prime Minister sat down. Will the member for O'Connor will get to his yes, point of well, order. Yes, well, I am. I'm just drawing your attention to Section 73, but the Prime Minister was still on his feet. The member, if the member for O'Connor doesn't come to his point of order, Standing Order I'll Number 73, which you should already probably know, says no member may reflect upon any vote of the House except upon a motion that such vote be rescinded. I draw to your attention the Prime Minister is reflecting on a vote well, of this House. I might. I might. I might. I might. I think, I think the honourable member for O'Connor may have grievously insulted everybody in the chamber by suggesting that uh, that we might be the Senate. The honourable the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> the leader of the opposition, Order. for petty reasons, willfully, despicably, purposefully voted down resource legislation in the Senate, denying resource security to the forest products industries of this country and denying Tasmania in particular the pulp mill it needed. And, Mr Speaker, I read from the Hobart Mercury where it said, Tasmania's Liberal senators are ignoring the needs of all the major players, but when it comes to the crunch they seem ready to let down Tasmania by putting their federal party before their state. The, Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker the guilty senators are Senators Archer, Calvert, Newman, Walters and Watson. They are the guilty people that put the knife into Tasmania by knifing this legislation down on the instructions of the Liberal Party room and the Leader of the Opposition. Now, Mr Speaker, the, President, the, 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 um, the, the Premier of Tasmania, Mr Groom, had this to say, I have said this legislation should be supported. It is up to individual members how they vote, but I have spoken to the Senators. I will not instruct the Liberal Senators because they are not part of the State Parliamentary Liberal Party. But I have spoken to everyone I can, from the Prime Minister to the Leader of the Opposition, to say the legislation should be passed. Then he said on the 25th of March. Then he said on the 25th of March. Order. The House will come to order. The I've, member for Franklin will cease I've from checking her on name. Gro him. Mr. Groom, I have told Dr. Hewson that in my view this has to be passed. There is no need for amendments. And then from the Minister for Forest, uh, the Forest Minister from Tasmania, Mr Rundle, said he was pleased Mr Keating agreed in Federal Parliament to change the title of the bill. He said there seems no reason why the legislation should not be passed. And it goes on. 
Mr Addis, the Tasmanian Forest Industry Association, said it was a federal opposition had the opportunity the federal opposition had the opportunity to put petty political posturing and point scoring ahead of job creation and investment. Here, here. And he went on to say the bill does offer something of substance. It does enable investment and job creation to get going. They said we want it all now or nothing, and in my view that's unforgivable. That's from uh, Mr Addis. And then Mr Ibbott, the Tasmania for the Future chairman. Whilst it agreed this legislation cannot provide everything for everyone, it at least provides a support for industrial development. The facts are that if it's not supported now, with or without amendments, it's lost forever. Suggestions of an improved legislation being passed are purely supposition. Now, Mr Speaker, they are the, they are the references from the, the Premier of Tasmania, the Forest Minister, the Minister for Forests in Tasmania, Mr Rundle, and spokespersons for industrial groups. And this piece of legislation has been willfully and wantonly destroyed for no good reason. We Order. put the bill up. We put the bill up. Order. We put the bill up, and for the lousiest, cheapest political reasons, you've gone and defeated the thing in the Senate. You've gone and defeated the Senate. And I notice Mr. Rundle also said this. I'm disappointed in them, and I'm disappointed in the government. Last week, as you know, we had a deal that 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 had really almost been stitched up. Almost between stitched up. Yeah, not what you were saying. What you were saying was there was Order. a deal stitched up. The I mean, deputy Mr. leader Ru of the National Mr. Party, Mr. Rundle, put uh, the deputy leader of the National Party's weights right up. Almost been stitched up. There was no arrangement agreed. No arrangement agreed. The Order. one amendment you sought was a name to change the name, which we agreed to. As the Tasmanian minister said, this ought to be enough now for the coalition to vote for the legislation. And he went in there and cynically voted the thing down. And, and, and again, I, I refer to the Leader of the Opposition in the House of Representatives. He said, What was an offer was some massive investment in Tasmania and indeed Geelong and Melbourne. My colleague, the member for Bass, and others would point out the pale state of the Tasmanian economy. And the government has walked away from $1.5 billion of possible investment in Tasmania, $600 million of investment at Maryvale and a potential $2 billion investment in South East New South Wales and East Gippsland and Victoria. Now, the fact is, Mr Speaker, knowing all that, despite all the bleatings about jobs and development, all the crocodile tears, cynically, willfully, wantonly, the Leader of the Opposition put resource security down and with it the interest of a pulp mill in Tasmania, the interest of the Tasmanian people, a relatively small community in Australia by way of the states relying upon large developments, put their interests straight asunder, put their interests straight asunder for nothing more than grubby, shabby political motives. Yeah. The Honourable the Leader of the Opposition.